Hi, I am Devdatta Kulkarni, founder of CloudArc. I am going to share with you today how to build Kubernetes operators that are good citizens of the increasingly multi-operator world. Little bit about me. I have been working in the system space for a long time. These days, apart from CloudArc, I also teach courses in cloud computing and modern web applications development in the computer science department at University of Texas at Austin. Kubernetes operator pattern has become widely popular for running various kinds of applications on Kubernetes. Operators are getting built for stateful applications, complex services, internal IT workflows, etc. A Kubernetes operator adds custom resources to a cluster. The set of resources on any cluster depends on what operators have been installed on it. For instance, here we have a MySQL operator and a custom application operator installed on the cluster and they add MySQL cluster and AppCR custom resources to it. The ensemble of Kubernetes built-in and custom resources that are deployed together to serve a specific workload can be thought of as an application stack. Increasingly, we are seeing a lot of DevOps teams use multiple Kubernetes operators to build their custom passes. This makes perfect sense actually, as the operator technology provides the right building blocks to deliver multi-tenancy that is required for any pass through the custom resource instances. Here are two examples of such passes that we have encountered in our work with different customers. On the left hand side, there is a Moodle pass built to deliver an e-learning solution on Kubernetes. This uses two operators, Moodle and MySQL. Moodle operator is developed in-house to deliver specific workload, re workload requirements for Moodle. Moodle instances depend on MySQL instances which are delivered by the MySQL community operator. This way, it serves multiple Moodle application stacks to different customers. On the right hand side, there is a pass developed to deliver browser instances to different application developers for their testing. This uses browser as a service operator developed by an internal DevOps team and for monitoring purposes, this pass uses the Prometheus operator. The custom passes built on Kubernetes are multi-tenant and multi-operator environments. So given that an operator may need to run alongside other operators in a cluster, the important question that operator developers need to ask today is whether their operator is ready for this multi-tenant and multi-operator world. Towards helping operator developers answer this question, we have developed the Kubernetes operator maturity model. It consists of four categories consumability, security, robustness, and portability, and there are guidelines in each of these categories. In today's talk, I'm going to focus on the four specific problems and the associated guidelines to address them. These problems are how to enable atomic deployments of application stacks, how to enable co-location of stack components, how to make application stacks robust against pod restarts and how to perform accurate chargebacks per application stack. Check out our comprehensive list of guidelines on our GitHub page to know more about these different categories and the guidelines. To discuss these questions, I'm going to use the example of the Moodle pass, which I referred to earlier. Moodle is an e-learning software and uh, I'm going to be using only two custom resources that uh, are part of this stack. There are several, but for the sake of discussion, I'm going to focus on only the two custom resources, uh, Moodle and MySQL cluster. The Moodle operator handles the Moodle custom resource and creates a pod with the Moodle software on it. The MySQL operator handles the MySQL custom resource and creates a pod for MySQL. And then the Moodle pod uses the MySQL pod for its database needs. The first problem we want to discuss is that of atomic deployments. Now, as a pass provider, we need to ensure that an application stack is created atomically. 
what do we mean by atomicity in the context of application stacks especially the stacks that are built or consist of ensemble of kubernetes resources where some of these resources may consist of uh, maybe custom resources coming from different operators uh, well the atomicity in this case means that we want to avoid situations where only some parts of an application stack are deployed and not others so for example uh, we want to avoid situations where let's say the moodle pod uh, has gotten deployed but the mysql pod has failed uh, to get scheduled or vice versa where uh, the mysql pod uh, gets scheduled but the moodle pod uh, has uh, failed uh, to get scheduled on any worker node so then the question is how can such atomicity be guaranteed especially when there are operators some community operators in your uh, in your multi operator environment some that you might have developed on your own so how do you really guarantee this atomicity and then the second question is what can operator developers do to ensure that the pods that are deployed as part of their custom resources get guaranteed scheduling from the kubernetes scheduler so one way to achieve guaranteed scheduling in kubernetes is to define resource requests and resource limits for all the containers that are defined as part of the pod spec now when we are working with custom resources uh, the the pod is not visible right because uh, the operator is going to handle the custom resource and as part of creating that custom resource it is going to create uh, some pods maybe it's not even actually directly creating a pod it is probably creating a deployment or a stateful set so the question is uh, what can the operator developer do to uh, leverage the built-in kubernetes mechanisms of uh, resource requests and resource limits because uh, if you look at the kubernetes scheduler if all the containers that are part of a pod spec uh, are provided with resource requests and limits then that pod is going to get guaranteed scheduling behavior so the Kubernetes scheduler will uh, will provide guarantees that that pod will get scheduled on some worker node which has adequate capacity. Okay, so as an operator developer, uh, our our guideline is that you can uh, provide in the custom resource spec uh, a, a way or, or the spec properties through which these resource requests and resource limits can be specified. Uh, and uh, then implement your custom controller which is part of your operator to pass these scheduling hints down to the pod that the custom controller is going to create when instantiating a custom resource instance so for example in case of moodle custom resource it could be that uh, the the actual resource requests and limits from the moodle custom resource instance uh, are passed down to the the pod that the moodle operator will create for that moodle instance so once you do that uh, if you are an operator developer then kubernetes will provide that guarantee of scheduling that pod on some worker node which uh, which has the capacity now it may so happen that you don't have access to you are not developing an operator you are using some operator from the community and then the question becomes uh, you don't know the source code of that operator to actually modify the custom controller then in that situation what can you do so our guideline is one uh, option that you can explore in the, that situation is uh, use some admission controllers maybe something like opa to uh, to intercept uh, such pods and then uh, then at that point you will be able to uh, change the spec to to add these scheduling hints on the custom resource uh, on on the containers that are defined as part of that pod the second problem that we want to look at is that of colocation so what do we mean by colocation in this context colocation means that we would like to run all the pods of an application stack on 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 the same worker node uh, you may need this for various reasons for example uh, you may want to provide some differential uh, 
service or treatment to different customers uh, as part of your pass and for that reason you may want to uh, just use some worker nodes to uh, to basically deploy a complete stack and you want all the parts of that stack to run on that worker node. Uh, that could be one reason. The other reason could be that when let's say if you are rotating certain worker nodes from your cluster, uh, you, you want to know which customers will get affected and if all the parts of a stack are running on that worker node, then, uh, then it will be easy for you to tell which customers will get affected. So what we want to avoid is uh, in case of this Moodle example is we want to avoid the split situation where the Moodle pod is running on worker node 1 and uh, the uh, MySQL pod is running on worker node 2. So how do you as an operator developer can achieve uh, co-location or enable co-location for, uh, for, for the pods uh, that your operator is generating, uh, creating for handling your custom resources and co-locate them with let's say some other custom resource pods that uh, some other operator uh, in, the, in, the, in your environment, in your cluster might be creating. So how can you really achieve that? So the, the only or one of the ways you can do that is by uh, enabling specific uh, enabling specification of uh, node selectors as part of your custom resource spec so in kubernetes there is this notion of uh, affinity uh, there is pod to node affinity and there is uh, also the affinity uh, between pods uh, so pod affinity and node affinity and the way it works is uh, if there is let's say if there is a node and if it has a uh, the, the node uh, may have some labels and then uh, in your pod spec if you specify a node selector uh, with the label of one of the nodes that the node has then the Kubernetes scheduler will schedule that pod on that particular node. Okay, so that, that's available uh, directly in Kubernetes. So as an operator developer uh, to enable co-location of your custom resources pods with let's say some other pods, you, you need to expose that uh, node selection capability through your custom resource specs. Okay, so if you uh, design your custom resource spec to allow specifying a node selector and then if you implement your custom controller to pass that node selector down to the pod that it will be creating, then it will be possible uh, to co-locate these your pod with some other pod uh, which may be coming from another custom resource or just uh, directly created uh, deployment uh, doesn't matter but having that uh, having that ability to specify node selector uh, and then passing that uh, label down to the pod will allow co-location of your pod with other pods. The third problem that uh, we are going to look at is uh, pod restarts and how to make an application stack robust against uh, pod restarts. An example of pod restart is when uh, a sidecar container is injected into a pod spec, uh, a pod uh, gets restarted. I mean anytime you modify the pod spec, uh, the pod uh, is going to get restarted. So uh, where do we see really pod uh, these sidecar injections happening? So there are certain operators, uh, uh, community operators that, uh, uh, that they will modify a pod spec. An example of that uh, is uh, are the volume backup operators. Uh, what they do is uh, some of the ones that we have looked at, they will uh, essentially in order to take uh, backup of a pod's uh, mounted volume, uh, they'll add a container to a pod spec and then that container, the sidecar container has access to that volume and then they are able to that way uh, the, take backup of that uh, volume. Now when in order to do uh, this, uh, that operator will uh, once a pod is uh, 
specified to that operator that operator will uh, modify that pod spec and inject this sidecar so in this example uh, we wanted to take backup of the moodle uh, of moodle custom resource and uh, the pod that uh, the moodle operator has created for that so the volume backup operator uh, once it injected uh, the sidecar into the moodle pod it caused the moodle pod to get restarted okay so now what is that uh, as an operator developer you need to be cognizant of such pod restarts because wh what may happen is after a pod gets restarted you have to still go back and verify whether whatever the application level invariants that uh, were supposed to be uh, valid uh, whether they are still valid you need to check that and uh, that that is something that you need to do so are, they are still maintained so the the way to handle uh, pod restarts is essentially your operator needs to subscribe to all the events that are related to any pods that uh, the operator is creating and then verifying if any invariants of the underlying software are still holding true so for example in in the case of the moodle uh, stack uh, the the requirement was that uh, there were these moodle plugins that had to be installed on uh, on a particular stack and once uh, the moodle pod got restarted uh, those plugins had to be uh, reinstalled because otherwise they uh, after a restart uh, there were situations where those plugins uh, would not be uh, present so uh, the, the operator had to subscribe to these uh, pod restart events and then ensure that the plugins uh, got installed again when the pods restarted finally as a fast provider we are also interested in accurate chargebacks uh, at, at different levels we may want to for example find out what is the cpu memory consumption of a particular custom resource uh, say for example uh, the mysql custom resource how, how much cpu and memory that one is uh, consuming or we may want to find out cpu memory consumption at the level of an entire application stack which uh, in this case consists of a moodle custom resource and a mysql custom resource so uh, and then how do we charge it back accurately to the customers for which that stack was created so to answer these questions what is needed is uh, we, we need to be able to discover all the resources that are part of an application stack so for example uh, here you see in this picture uh, the moodle application stack actually consists of uh, several built in resources like ingress and stateful set service config map persistent volumes persistent volume claims uh, and there are custom resources cluster issuer moodle and mysql cluster the in order to uh, do accurate chargebacks uh, we need this entire graph uh, of custom resources i mean resources uh, of a stack because without that entire graph and without uh, the ability to uh, find out all the for example pods uh, that are part of a stack we won't be able to accurately find out what's the cpu consumption of the entire stack because ultimately what, what we need to find out is what all pods are part of a application stack and then find out the cpu consu consumption of the containers that are part of those pods and uh, the only way you can find out all the pods that are part of an application stack is if we follow the connections between different resources that are part of a stack so as you are aware in kubernetes there are uh, different kinds different mechanisms to establish uh, inter resource connections uh, there are owner references there are labels and annotations and there are spec properties so four different ways exist and uh, what this picture is showing is uh, not only the application stack consists of all these different resources but uh, there are these resources are related to one another through uh, these various different uh, relationships owners labels annotations or spec properties 
and in order to be able to discover that entire resource relationship graph we, we need to be able to follow these relationships within a stack and that's how we will be able to discover the entire graph and then that's how we will be able to find out all the uh, all the pods all the persistent volume claims that that are uh, part of that particular stack in order to discover uh, these resource relationships and the resource relationship graphs we have developed q plus which is open source tool that uh, is able to basically uh, discover all the kubernetes resources uh, including custom resources and their sub resources uh, it's able to discover these uh, on a running cluster q plus is able to discover uh, the connectivity and the topology of all these resources and then we provide several kubectl plugins uh, to retrieve the graph and get stack level aggregation metrics and logs uh, fr from uh, from that uh, leveraging that relationship graph so uh, so how does uh, q plus discover these relationships and uh, build the relationship graph uh, in order to do that, uh, especially for uh, discovering custom resources and their dependencies, uh, what needs to happen is Q plus needs to be aware of the operator developers assumptions around custom resources and their dependencies on other resources. By the way, Q plus is a generic tool, so it uh, works with any operator. Uh, so the way these operator developers assumptions need to be captured is uh, we have developed a simple mechanism to capture these assumptions. Uh, it consists of uh, five different annotations that can be put or that need to be put on the custom resource definitions or the CRDs uh, that are packaged as part of an operator. These annotations offer a simple declarative way to capture for example what sub resources will be created by a custom resource by an operator for handling a custom resource or what type of labels annotations or spec property based relationships can exist between a custom resource and other uh, resources uh, for for uh, for that operator to work to do its work here i have three examples of using these CRD annotations with the custom resources we have seen previously. The first example shows how to define what sub resources will be created by the MySQL cluster custom resource operator when uh, an instance of MySQL cluster is created. The second example shows what sub resources will be created by the Moodle operator for instantiating a Moodle custom resource instance. Well, the third example is showing that uh, the cluster issuer custom resource depends on a specific annotation on the ingress resource for to, to do its work. And by the way, the cluster issuer custom resource uh, is coming from the cert manager operator and it uh, uh, it, it helps uh, with uh, generating SSL uh, certificates from uh, authorities like Let's Encrypt and the way it works is you need to specify a particular annotation on the ingress resource and that basically is captured through this CRD annotation. We are, uh, th there is no way to capture such operator developers assumptions today uh, and these annotations enable uh, defining and capturing these annotations uh, these assumptions uh, as part of your crds so uh, our appeal to my appeal to all the operator developers is to look at these annotations and uh, add them to your operators uh, we are also maintaining a list of uh, operators and crds for which we have uh, added these annotations on our github page so you can take a look at that uh, and we'll be happy to add your operators to that list as well so 
once these resource relationship graphs are discovered using q plus uh, we have uh, kubectl plugins uh, which can enable you to do uh, application stack level chargeback so for example the kubectl metrics plugin uh, that is possible to use that to track cpu memory storage uh, usage at custom resource level or at application stack level uh, in, the, in this picture on the left you can see output of mysql custom resource metrics which consists of two pods and on the right you can see output for the entire moodle application stack which consists of three pods one from the moodle custom resource and two from the mysql custom resource these metrics can then be surfaced in prometheus to get view into resource consumption at different levels so here the screenshot shows cpu consumption for a mysql cluster custom resource instance and then this can be used to build chargebacks for your pass users so to summarize we have developed the platform as code practice that simplifies building passes using kubernetes operators it consists of operator maturity model that offers comprehensive guidelines on operators readiness for multi-tenant and multi-operator environments. It also includes Q plus tooling that enables inventory and chargeback for application stacks built using operators. Check out our GitHub page to learn more about these. Thank you. I will take questions now.